Martin Carlson here with uh, Strangely and Oddities. We're here at Texas Frightmare Weekend. I'm really excited to be here with uh, Brad and Fiona Dura. How y'all doing today? Hi. Good. good. I'm doing good. I, I'm also doing good. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is doing good. So that's, that's a good. That's, that's a good. Uh, we got some coffee here, so the espresso is starting to run. Th- you run through. I just had m- I had mine as well right before this. I'm I'm, I'm definitely a little amped. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so I was going to start with you, uh, Brad, if that's okay. Um, you've been in a lot of amazing films. One of my favorites is uh, Cuckoo's Nest, all the way through the Lord of the Rings series. And then my dad would freak about Mississippi Burning. He used to teach that in class, that as well as Wise Blood. And so you've worked with so many amazing uh, filmmakers. Can you talk about some of the directors you've worked with um, and some of the favorites that you had? Well, uh, I mean, uh, I w- I've worked with Milos Forman, um, um I worked with um, uh, God uh, uh, John Houston, uh, um, tons of people. Yeah. <laughs> um, I you know Milos Forman I I really liked because he was so determined to get what he wanted. You would stay there until he was happy, which a lot of directors don't do. Um, so I always felt comfortable after I finished a scene with him that I knew I did at least what he wanted. And then uh, John Houston was just amazing because he was so economical in, um, in, in his shots. He, s- he knew what he needed and he was not afraid to sustain a, sh- uh, a whole scene in, a, in just one, two shot. Um, I, I had several scenes that were like that. Um, in that movie, um, and and we shot very quickly. We we shot, uh, you know, we would get up there, we would start at nine, rehearse, uh, and be finished by uh, eleven thirty noon at the latest. Our lunch, which never happens, and uh, and then uh, we would go and shoot the next scene, and sometimes finish that by three thirty in the afternoon. Done day. Really? Yeah, that, really. That doesn't <laughs> that I mean, he was that economical, and that um, he just knew what he was going to shoot and and how it would work and and so forth. He's just that level of experience you never see. That's amazing. Um, I also want to, of course, we're here with the whole Chucky family. Um, I got to talk to uh, Kevin Yeager this morning. That was really awesome to see, kind of one side of the creation of Chucky, and now to to well, see, you know, he's the original creator of Chucky and um, what he did with Chucky was uh, at the time very innovative um, and it pushed the whole ball you know the whole um, uh, the whole thing forward um, and animatronics no it's it's really impressive I mean to this day I was rewatching the whole series this week and like even watching the original is how amazing the animatronic uh, work was and I want to talk to both of you about from two different perspectives what has this franchise meant to you, to you personally, each of you, and also like your family? Like you grew up, you know, with this kind of character that your your dad was playing. So to both of you, like what what does it meant to be part of the the Child's Play family, to the Chucky family for both of you? I, you know, I um, I guess I I the thing that amazed me the most is how popular the series was. Um, I became like. Um, a star amongst my uh, children's peers. Um, I mean, they were both embarrassed to have me anywhere near them, of <laughs> course. But every all the other kids would uh, would um, you know be saying, "Hey, do Chucky, do Chucky, do Chucky." Um, so, um, I, and I thought that would give me some kind of um, some kind of brownie points with my kids, but no. <laughs> it did not. So, um, but uh, yeah, that was that was fun. That was really that was really fun. Um, I don't think those children should have been allowed to see that, <laughs> but um, they did. So, I have a memory that I'm not sure if it's fabricated of being at the Child's Play one premiere. Did that happen? I would have been seven. Probably. It did happen. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Um, so, uh, 
what God, the franchise has been, it's such a weird center point of my life. Um, so, uh, you know, my tagline is one of the coolest things about like, you know, dating me in ninth grade was that my dad was Chucky. Uh, and my birthday is the day before Halloween and we would have Halloween parties for my birthday. And it was the only time when my dad would do the laugh, which was really exciting. Um, and you know, and then it, it, being cast in um, Curse of Chucky was a big deal for me. It was my first uh, studio lead. Um, and, you know, it it put me, it just <laughs> brought me into this, like, fold that is um, really fun to be a part of because people are really excited about it. Don Mancini, who I met, um, I actually didn't know him my whole life, but um, we met during Curse of Chucky. He became a really good friend of mine. I like spend holidays with him. Um, and yeah, I, you know, it's really fun to get to make something with people that you love and my dad and that people like dig it. <laughs> it's just like a really weird, cool thing. And I feel really lucky to be a part of it. It's like this weird thing I got to... I kind of slipped into by birth and I um, just just I just appreciate it. So off of that, so the first time you worked together was on Deadwood, correct? Uh, yes. yes. Let me tell this story. Okay, I want to hear the story then. So yes, I, I I was I was not basically I was not cast on Deadwood, but um, nepotism does exist and uh, I got I uh, was able to play, I was an art department PA, and then they were like, hey, do you want to be whore number three? And I was like, yes, I do. And my dad played the doctor with all these like gynecology scenes. And um, I got to say three words on Deadwood, three lines, sorry, three lines, not three words. And um, I was taft heart lead into SAG, which means you get into the union. And uh, it was for the line, close your ears, dad. Um, he says he wants it in pussy. It was my first line ever. Um, and it was in the back of a stagecoach. And it was also one of the best television shows ever made. Anybody seen Deadwood? Deadwood is incredible. <laughs> so that's cool. I'm a huge fan of the show. <laughs> so, yeah, I was. Um, and uh, off of that, like, what is, you know, Fiona, what has been your experience specifically with, with acting, like in terms of, stuff like how do you two talk about the craft do you talk about the craft is it like you know your own kind of journey with your acting classes or what have you um no we we, we do we put ourselves um so basically the job of being an, a working actor is auditioning i mean unless you're one of the few that doesn't but um, me and my dad have been putting each other on tape which is you sit at home and you tape <laughs> You do these like endless takes of each other uh, auditioning and then they're sent into the void and, and <laughs> you never hear anything back. Um, but we've been doing that for a long time together and um, and we talk about acting a lot, actually, because it's a it's a it's a wonderful, interesting art form um, that if you're when you're lucky enough to get to do it and get paid for it, it's like the most exhilarating thing on earth anything to say about acting Dora? well also um you know in the beginning um you know um i uh, it was much more of a mentor relationship um it's still a mentor it's still it's still yeah. that there are things i know that you that you can only know from doing it as much as i've done it but um it's become much more equal now i don't know about that <laughs> yeah. but thank it you has for so that's that's really that's really nice to hear. Um, I think that you know, in short, we were actually just talking before you showed up upstairs about when you're playing Chucky. Like, are you are you on set at all, or is it? I, I'm not sure about the kind of experience you've had in terms of like, are you is it more recording booth and kind of like or like talking with the director ahead of time? It's it's totally recording booth. Totally. Okay, um, almost like an animated. It, yeah. yeah, there is no difference. Um, um, you know, uh, all animation, anything that's that's uh, not alive, has to start with something that's alive. So that's the voice, and um, and um, they have to match the mouth to the 
to the words and they have to try to get into the expressions and the feelings of and you know what they feel like in 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 the facial expressions and so forth and the way the doll moves and 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 the way animation moves um you do do ADR um afterwards which means that you know um you have to do uh some line uh Don Mancini did um and that's really hard <laughs> work <laughs> cuz he ain't is I mean I I love him he's wonderful but he he's not as good as me <laughs> <laughs> at, at, at Chucky's voice. <laughs> at Chucky's <laughs> voice. That's what we're talking about. He's a wonderful writer. Love him. Yeah. That's uh, so. In you know, when it comes to that, from Child's Play all the way to Cult of Chucky, you know, I was, my cameraman and I were watching the whole series together, and watching the way he's he's so much more evil it seems like in the first one and he becomes he, especially in the middle ones he becomes more likable like thinking about like bride specifically in terms of your performance with your voice you know it definitely has a more playful tone i felt like with with bride was that something you thought about as you went through the through the series well the series the series adjusted um to the um to the 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 way the genre itself changed um, and um, during that period, um, it was the genre had become self-referential, yeah. and um, and so we did. I actually, I think Bride is his best script mm. um, uh, because of um, bringing in um, bringing in Bride of Frankenstein. It just was such a perfect thing, you know. Um, and uh, and having Tiffany be this weird homicidal uh, uh, romantic <laughs> you know, was was a really really fun idea. The big thing, uh, the big risk is that Chucky is a monster, and he always has to have bottom lined. Um, this thing where y if he decides he's going to kill you, there's no negotiation. Um, he will turn a living human being into a piece of meat. Um, and that still, that seriousness has to be there, but he can dance over it a bit. Because I, I feel like I hear, you know, watching Cuckoo's Nest, and obviously it's a you know, different time period in, in your life and your career, but that voice is so iconic now, you know, and I, I just, it, it sticks with you, you know, actually I was so terrified as a, as a kid, you know, of Chucky. And I remember like dressing up as him for Halloween and it was, uh, I had to talk my parents into it because they weren't not about horror movies. Um, but <laughs> Why did you see them, <laughs> they, you knock over to your friend's house, didn't you? His name is Justin Edwards. And I'm calling you out, Justin. <laughs> His mom would rent us anything we wanted to watch. So, that's when I watched the entire series. <laughs> That's what happened to my kids. Well, well, no, what happened, so I, the, the truth about Brad and me is that we can't watch horror because we get too scared. <laughs> both, of, both of us are wimps, but my older sister, Christina, uh, we weren't allowed to watch horror movies. And then what? what's the story? She went over to her neighbor's house and they all had the whole everything. And we f you figured it out because... Oh. So I had this we, I had this very strict rule about what the kids could see and what they could see and I thought they were obeying it. And um and um I said at 14 you can watch whatever you want. I'm I'm lifting it. So on Christina's 14th birthday, she went we went down to pick out a movie because in those days you went to the to the store to rent a movie. Yep. So we rented, she rented this movie, this slasher film. And I tried to watch it. I really tried <laughs> to watch it. I couldn't. It was terrifying. I <laughs> left the room. And then I came back when she was sitting down and watching the titles at the end and with this kind of really blank but interested expression to see who did the makeup and and all that kind of thing. And it suddenly dawned on me, this kid is really jaded. <laughs> Not only that, 
she knows exactly who everybody is, which <laughs> means she's been watching horror movies for years. Yeah. And um, and I asked her, and she owned up that yeah, I, you know, Here went over in the next <laughs> her neighbor's house and watched there. I one time was not I was eight years old and I wasn't supposed to have seen Silence of the Lambs and I was at dinner with my parents and they had this like well at the restaurant I said oh that reminds me of the well in Silence of the Lambs and my mom just was not <laughs> was not having it she's like caught like, huh. and I was like it's like 1991 I'm eight years old it's like right after it came out and I I was like I was not good at lying to my parents at all um in terms of uh what's next for you two uh together or separately uh things you're excited about I'll, I'll leave that. I'm not excited about anything. <laughs> no, nothing no at all. Excitement. <laughs> um, we have nothing together uh, planned, though. I think we just have to get it together and uh, and either make something ourselves or sort that out. Because I think that me and you should be in a live action thing. Um, I'm on a TV show called Blacklist, um, and I play James Spader's daughter. Um, and I think that it's... It's one of, uh, it's Wednesday? Wednesday's on NBC. <laughs> Too bad Claudia's not here. <laughs> we'll just, we'll dub the rights. She, <laughs> yeah, she you dub the rights. It. She records it. Uh, uh, Claudia is his girlfriend, who is the nicest woman in the world. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then there's, there's in there's negotiations happening for a, a Child's Play television series that would be run by Don Mancini, which um, I don't, I don't. I don't actually know exactly what her involvement would be, but I'll do anything with Don for the end of till the end of time. And oh, sorry. And you've talked about and working with Don. I mean, specifically, he's he's great to work because he is kind of like Kevin Yeager called him like the Godfather of of Chucky. You know, would you would you I mean agree with that sentiment? Yeah, he invented Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <coughs> it was his idea. Yeah. Um, I think he talked about that. Uh, there was a panel. Uh, Yesterday, when they s showed Chud the first one, mm -hmm. and um, and he talked about that uh, about the beginning, and and you know it wasn't the movie that it that it was, you know, um, and you know in some cases we're better off that that movie got done, and s and uh, some cases we lost some things that uh, would have been nice, but. Um, but it got changed, and um, but he's it's his idea. I want to clarify. So I think I think what you're talking about, because they might not be clear, is that the original. So Don wrote Child's Play in college, when he was, <laughs> when I he was a an student. Yeah. Oh yeah. He was a student of my dad's That's at right. Columbia in New York City. Yeah. And uh, it was when my mom was pregnant with me, and. Uh, and we were living up in Woodstock. So I guess Don met me sort of when I was uh, a fetus. But um, the original script that Don wrote, there was no serial killer. Uh, Ch Chucky was a manifestation of Andy's id. So when he, I and the action started when uh, Andy cut, so Andy was a kid who was, whose parents were getting divorced and you know he was upset and angry and all the things that you are when you're a kid and he got his um, finger cut and then th th Chucky, th the doll, was one of those um, like animatronic uh, pet uh, uh, dolls. Yeah, and it would bleed, so it was like called a blood brother and so, um, and so Andy ma cut himself and put it together with Chucky. And then Chucky comes alive and starts killing the people who Andy had a feud with. And you don't know if it's Andy or Chucky for most of the movie. So that's a really cool movie, too. Um, but it didn't have Brad Dourif. But anyway, that was the original uh, concept of Chuck's play. And, uh, you know, and it's still very much Don's script. It was just uh, altered. That is a. Uh, it's interesting how films change because the original film Hook was supposed to be a slasher film with Captain Hook t taking all the kids who escaped from Never Never Land and killing them as adults. And then Steven Spielberg, I guess this is what I heard, read the scripts and said, "No, this should be a kids' cutesy movie with you know oh, 
a grown up, you know, a grown up Peter Pan. Um, a few uh, fan questions that we got for Strange and Oddities. So uh, thank you for sending your questions as always. Um, from Antonio Rivera, uh, this is for Fiona. Um, you are really good at emotional scenes, he says. Uh, <laughs> what are some techniques you use to work yourself up before doing an intense scene? Yeah, that's the, <laughs> it's the worst part of it. It's the most exhausting part of acting. Um, so I try to relax a lot, which is really important. And then you, um, <laughs> it's all this is an embarrassing question, actually. <laughs> Whatever you're <laughs> um, So there's a few things in my life that have happened that, um, that are, you know, represent <laughs> different like swaths of emotions. So if I'm, I can get scared really easily. I don't really have to work at that. But if I if I'm dealing with something like grief or um, I you know I constantly constantly playing people who are fucking sad. God, uh, I have the corner on that. Um, so I'll like look at I'll 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 think about things and look at pictures of things of of different people who I've lost in my life. Um, I'll listen to music. I'll lay down on the ground and get real really relaxed to get it in my body and then you just have to hope it's there and then let go <laughs> and you want to answer yeah, what do you do um it's pretty much uh, the same thing um you um every emotion has a uh, a certain a certain kind of emotional life emotion doesn't we we uh, tie meaning to emotion, but emotion itself really doesn't. So um, so you you what you want to do is get it going. So you go to some place or have a fantasy that works as well, um, which puts pitches you in and and gets you to that. And then it's as Fiona said, you have to let it go, and you have to trust it, and you have to let the scene really shape it and, 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 and bring it out. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and other people, you know. I mean, acting depends a lot on who you're working with. Um, it's not, uh, it's not, um, it's a living in the moment kind of a thing. It, it, it never is the same twice. Um, so you have to be brave. I guess. Yeah. I took a class on like Meister technique one time, and it was oh, very yeah. much was so. Dangerous. And I was reading about that, and just being so with the person who's across from you and having this real, you know, real moment is so difficult. But it's like almost like. Oh, I, so hard. Yeah, it's it. I didn't. I did like three classes. So that's, that's as far as I made it. Yeah, yeah. I think I was, I, I I knew I, I knew it wasn't for me. Uh, so uh, another question from. Uh, Kira Childers, uh, this is for you, Brad. Uh, is it weird, even though you're acting, but as your character is killing your daughter and Fiona, what is it like again? Is your dad's character trying to kill you on film? I guess that's for both of you. Um, I have no problem killing <laughs> Fiona. <laughs> <laughs> I was a really shitty teenager. I really was. I was the worst. Um. <laughs> Um, I, you know, it's very strange. I mean, we have worked for doing auditions and from um, all this kind of, we've worked a lot together. It feels extremely natural for me to work with Fiona. I did not work with Fiona in Chucky. I only did one rehearsal with her um, and I felt Lucky to, to have that time. I mean, that was fun. It was really fun. Um, but um, I actually did that. Uh, I, I did the um, uh, curse with um, with uh, my girlfriend's daughter. Mm. She came. I needed somebody to play off with, and it was. It always goes better when when Don can sit back and direct and. I can work off of somebody else, so I brought her along, and I and I did it to her, um, and it went it you know it went fine. She was she was perfect, and and um, and, and and it went fine. So the yeah, you just need somebody to bounce off of, um, 
uh, last uh, in in um, in um, in um, what was the last movie called? Um, Wilders. No, with Don. Oh, Cult. Cult. No. Sorry, in Cult, I had to do the scenes with with Don. <laughs> it was just. I mean, you know, I'd put my hand on, on, on his shoulder and really talk to him when I was doing Chucky, and he was like, <laughs> he didn't know what to do with himself. <laughs> and that was fun. Yeah. That was really fun. Watching him kind of become slowly unglued was kind of <laughs> cool. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you, you, you know, you, um, yeah. So I, I love working with Fiona. Fiona's really, really, really good actress. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I have... <laughs> Um, yeah, thanks, Dad. Um, so I have I have a story um, about my experience working with uh, my dad as Chucky, wh which is um, so you're it's a it's a walking, moving puppet. Um, so you you are actually like acting off of an entity that's speaking, and then they play the 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 words. You know, so I'm like lying on the floor and I'm dying and he's he's saying these awful, awful, awful things to me. And uh, this was in Curse of Chucky. And I asked Don if I didn't realize that they were going to be playing m my dad's voice doing it. And I asked him if if uh, he could have one of the puppeteers uh, talk instead of my dad. Cause I was like, this is going to throw me, you know what I mean? Like he's, I just, he's not scary. <laughs> my dad is not scary. <laughs> um, and, uh, exactly the opposite happened because, because you've been the main source of comfort and like protection in my life to have that be the voice that's taunting me in a way in like a situation that feels completely surreal was so unnerving was so like deeply deeply bothersome um that it you know it did nothing but help me um it was it was it was deeply unsettling um so yeah that's my story and she's sticking to it sticking to it well, that's, uh, I guess, all the time we have. Thank you so much for talking with me. This is a real pleasure. Um, and uh, we're here at uh, Texas Frightmare with Strangely Oddities. Uh, thank you both, Brad and Fiona Duriff. And uh, thank you so much.